Mr. Jones. Hey, can I get some help in here? Can you give me a summary of what happened? Yeah, I was just walking by and I found Mr. Jones to be unresponsive with no pulse, so I started chest compressions. Okay. I need someone to assess the airway and begin bag mask ventilation. The patient's not responding. I'll begin bag mask ventilation. Great. I need someone to place a monitor. Thank you. Um, IV med person, can you place an IV and be prepared to give medications? Sure. We have an 18 gauge IV in the right forearm, normal saline running wide open, and we're ready to administer medicine. Excellent. Thank you. Monitor is ready. Great, thank you. Is someone timing and recording this code? I'm recording the code. Oh, great, thank you. Let's go ahead and stop compressions and assess the rhythm. The patient is in VFib? Yes, the patient is still in VFib. Let's resume chest compressions. Can you charge the defibrillator to 200 joules? Charging we, the defibrillator. We will defibrillate on my word. It's important to minimize the interruption in chest compressions. So let's go ahead and clear the patient. I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. Defibrillate now. Shock delivered. Great. The patient is still in VFib? Yes, let's resume chest compressions. Okay, can you please give IV Wonder Drug A now and flush it, please? I have IV Wonder Drug A. Wonder Drug A has been administered IV and is flushed. I'm getting kind of tired. I could use a break. Okay, thank you for alerting me. Dave, I'm going to need you to take over chest compressions. Can you let me know when you're ready? I'm ready. Okay, let's go ahead and stop and assess the rhythm. The patient is still in V-fib. Let's resume chest compressions for two minutes and charge the defibrillator to 200 joules. That was a nice transition, thank you. Your chest compressions need a bit more depth to ensure good circulation. How's that? That's great, thank you. Defibrillator charge. Great. Recorder, what time did we resume chest compressions? Chest compressions were resumed at 12.54. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and clear the patient. I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. Defibrillate now. Shock Okay, let's assess the rhythm. Looks like we're in normal sinus rhythm. Can someone check for a pulse? Yes, I feel a pulse. Great, and our blood pressure is 120 over 80. This team rocks. So, real good guys, so tell me how you think this uh, went, how did it feel? For me, having the script made it easier to understand what my role should be later on when we did the repeated exercises. And I think it was good that the team leader assigned the roles uh, when she walked in right, right at the start. Uh, so, uh, how did it feel to be team leader? Well, I mean, I was working with a great team and Sid was telling me he was charging the defibrillator and John was giving medications. and. Mark was doing excellent compressions, and when they needed to trade, like, uh, I, I thought it went well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't know really anything about my role, so the uh, team was great and told me how to work the back belt mask, and Lisa had extremely clear messages about what I, what I needed to do when I the transition. With me being the recorder, it was nice to hear everybody. Everybody spoke loud, so I knew what was happening. And yeah, was sometimes it can get difficult when you have multiple conversations going on. Yeah, there was a lot happening. Yeah. It's, it's kind of overwhelming when you first walk in. You're, you know, there's so much going on, you're not sure what you're actually supposed to write down, and you know, what's important and what's not important. And I know the first time going through it, it was nice to have the script, but even the second time, I was still sometimes trying to catch up. So did you notice a difference the first time you did it from the last time you did it? And tell well, me a little bit. we were far more effective by the time we got to the final exercise. Yeah, it was much better by the end. Like, I felt like we knew our roles and everybody was, was really good at communicating with each other. Yeah, much better. Honestly, it's good to get off script, too. Because at first, when we're on script, we're kind of worried about sticking to that. And we're, I think we're thinking less about the, the experience of working as a team. So even though it felt a little uncomfortable at first, Getting rid of that script, I think it's good. It definitely helped the flow. Yeah. I thought we were going to learn more about like the medications and the compressions. Like, are we supposed to do continuous or are we supposed to do 30 to 2? Like, that was really confusing. So, I mean, that's a good point. But the point of the exercise 
really is not to learn CPR, but those other features that when you work on a team can impact outcome, even as much as epinephrine and good chest compressions. So when you look at it like that, what were those key features? What were those things that you did learn that could be as important as epinephrine? I think we could have done a little, like as a team, better job of not talking over each other so, so much. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see a little bit more knowledge sharing as well about some of the chest compressions you were doing and the medications you were given, just to, so that we can learn during the, during the exercise. Those two things kind of collide with each other because, for example, with the defibrillator, almost no one is really yeah. familiar with that device. And so if there's someone who is familiar and they start giving advice on how to use it, then to your point, there starts getting to be people talking over each other. So sorting that out is kind of a challenge. Sometimes maybe if we just took the uh, communication through the team leader, I mean, it's one way to do it. So I can see how the way we have effective communication is really can impact how well we're doing certain procedures together.